I'm Cheyenne, and welcome to the LARP House. This episode, we are doing something a little different that I'm really, really, really excited about. Can you tell how excited I am? I'm really excited. Can you tell? Huh. This week, I am going to introduce you to the Irish branch of the LARP House, hosted by Stephen Jack over from Hog and Dice Productions. This person and their workshop really feel like a Twilight Zone complimentary version of me and mine. I really feel like we're kindred spirits, like we're both just cosmic horrors trapped in flesh prisons awaiting the day we can finally return to space. That's oddly specific, I know. That has always been one of my goals with LARP House, is to find other made-up fairy people like me with really weird, specific skills that aren't super useful in everyday life. But what better place to put really weird, specific skills to use than LARP? I left the subject matter of the first tutorial for the Irish branch totally up to Steven, so I honestly have no idea what they were going to show you. I know whatever they choose to show you is going to be rad and weird and cool, so without further ado, let's say hi to Steven. Let's make a goddamn fire sword. Good morrow, nerds. I am obviously not Cheyenne Rain, and this is not the LARP House. This is Larforus. What is Larforus? Well, it's the Irish for LARP House. Okay, this is LARP House, but in Irish. Except I'm not going to speak Irish. Shut up! My name is Stephen Jack. You may know me as Hug, from the channel Hug and Dice. But more likely, you've no idea who I am. I'm here. Mostly because I work using materials that Cheyenne doesn't use very often. Things like metal, wood, leather, horn, and bone. Today, we're going to be talking about how to make a fire sword like this. This isn't strictly something you want to use in a LARP. If your LARP has room for performances, then maybe a fire toy is something that would be good for you to bring. I just came back from College of Wizardry 16, where one of the houses arranged for a fire show in front of the castle. It was stunning to watch. In fact, you're probably watching some B-roll of it right now. For those who would like to be able to do fire performance in the performance areas of their LARP, this is for you. Also, just fire swords are really fucking cool. And don't let anyone ever tell you anything different. It's, it's really fun swinging around a flaming sword, I'm not going to lie. For this, you're going to need a hardwood boken or waster, PVA glue, aluminium foil, Kevlar fabric, Kevlar sewing thread, a one millimeter thick sheet of brass or aluminium, two nuts, two bolts, two lock washers, and a steel cap from any kind of container. Bokens usually come varnished, so you'll want to sand the blade to remove all of the varnish like I've done here. Next, you'll want to cut a hole in the steel cap large enough to get the blade of the boken or waster into. This should be a fairly snug fit, you don't want it to slide on easily. I used the cap from a pepper shaker because it already had holes in it, making it much, much easier to cut the shape and size of hole that I wanted. When that's done, you'll want to use a wooden or rubber mallet to hammer the cap onto the blade to act as protection for your hands from fire. Next, you should use the PVA glue to glue a layer of aluminium foil to the blade of your boken. This will help to protect the wood from being scorched and set on fire, and insulate it from some of the heat a little bit. I place a length of Kevlar on the sword, spreading it across both sides, and using a curved upholstery needle and Kevlar thread, sew it together down one side, and then down the other side. I'm afraid I had some technical difficulties with my laptop and lost the footage for this bit, but basically the area of the blade between the Kevlar wick and the handle. Wrap leather around that, 
and sew it together on one side with the Kevlar sewing thread again. This leather helps to provide additional protection for the blade and it helps to protect the foil from being scratched during travel or use or anything else. Make sure you use real leather. Don't use any kind of synthetic leather. Real leather will scorch and it will like, it won't go on fire probably, but it will burn and it will get damaged. But synthetic leather will melt and it might drip. And if it drips on you, that can cause a third degree burn. Do not use any kind of synthetic leather. And again, I'm having to replace some lost footage. So what you want to do with your aluminium strip is cut it so it's about an inch and a half wide, maybe a little more. Wrap it around your blade like that. Just You just need to get it once around the blade. Cut it short, then tuck the metal in. You may need to use a pliers if you're using not a coke can, which I actually don't recommend. Don't use a coke can. I did that as an experiment. It's not great. Now, when you're doing this yourself, you'll want to put it half on the leather and half on the Kevlar. You'll drill once on the leather, once on the Kevlar, put a bolt through, the whole way through, mind. Then, on the other side, you'll put on a lock washer and a nut on each bolt. Don't use a lock nut because the rubber washer that it uses to stay on will burn away. Use a lock washer. The best fuel for your fire sword is lamp oil. It will burn brightly, but not too hot, and with a minimum of smoke and fumes. Don't use anything you would use to fuel your car. Don't use petrol or diesel. They will burn way too hot and the fumes will ruin your throat. And there will be a lot of smoke as well. Make sure you add the oil over a suitable container so that you can pour any excess back into the bottle. If you can't do this over soil or grass or sand or something, then try and do it next to a drain as shown here. So any excess spillage will go straight into the pipes or soak into the soil or whatever. You don't want spilled fuel on the concrete. It could catch fire unexpectedly. Light your fire sword tip first and make sure to hold the blade tip down for a little while, rotating the blade slowly just to make sure that the fire spreads across the wick and does so evenly and covers the entire wick. Do this before you raise it up too high. Even when you do lift it, keep rotating it slowly until you're completely satisfied that the flame has spread as much as it can. how to make a fire sword and how to use a fire sword so we're going to talk about safety if you have long hair like me then what you want to do if you're going to be using any kind of fire toy is to either put it in a ponytail or better yet a braid the reason for this is because the more tightly packed your hair is the less oxygen there is around each individual hair and the less combustible each individual hair is you could also put your hair under a bandana or you could soak it in water before burning. In terms of what clothing you should be wearing while using fire, I advise fabrics like cotton, wool, raw silk, and natural fibers. Because these materials, when they burn, they just leave ash. And that ash is fairly harmless. So if, they, if your cotton t-shirt catches fire, it'll burn away and it will just leave ash. Whereas if you're using a synthetic fiber, if you're wearing a synthetic fiber like polyester, it will melt. And that melted plastic can cause third degree burns. So no, it, it basically turns into napalm and you don't want that. Leather and suede both will resist burning for quite a while. They'll get scorched, 
and that scorching can cause a lot of warping and damage to the leather and the suede, but they will be more resistant to catching fire. They'll need more time in contact with the flame to catch fire than most other fabrics. You also want to be wearing clothing that fits fairly snugly, fairly tightly, because just having loose bits of fabric flapping all over the place is obviously more likely to catch fire. Your fire sword, any fire toy you use, will degrade over time. Because let's be realistic, you are repeatedly setting it on fire. Nothing can be repeatedly set on fire and not be damaged by that. The wooden core, the foil, the metal, the leather, the ke even the Kevlar will all need to be replaced every so often. So the best thing to do, just to circumvent anything going wrong, is when you think any element is starting to wear thin, is starting to take too much damage and looks like it might need to be replaced soon, retire the whole sword and make a new one. Just make a new one from scratch. You're going to need to replace everything anyway, so when anytime you need to replace anything, replace everything. What you should do with your retired swords? Well, you could display them for sentimental value, or you could have a big bonfire. Never, ever, ever burn alone. Always make sure there is another person there with you. And always make sure you have a means of extinguishing the fire. And I don't just mean extinguishing random things that you might accidentally set on fire while using whatever it is you're using. I mean extin extinguishing them, extinguishing you if you set yourself on fire, and extinguishing your tool in case you're having difficulty putting it out when you're done, or in case you've lost your confidence and you feel like you don't want to do this anymore, which is perfectly understandable. Fire is not to just be messed around with, so if you feel like using fire is a little too overwhelming at this point, and you're already lit up, just put it out. Just put it out immediately. Now the best things to use for this are a fire blanket or a wet towel. They're both about as effective as each other. How they work is by smothering the fire and cutting off the oxygen. They work well for everything. They work well for wrapping around a person who is on fire. They work well for beating out fire on the ground or on objects. They work well for extinguishing your tool. Fire blankets and wet towels are the way to go. Fire blankets are expensive to buy and are one use only. You use your fire blanket to put something out you need a new fire blanket. Wet towels, on the other hand, you put something out with the wet towel, as long as you wash it in between, it'll be fine to use it again. Make sure you have a high fat snack or drink ready. Even the fumes from lamp oil will irritate your throat and be very annoying. And one of the best ways of doing that, of getting around that, is by eating or drinking something high in fat. Um, milk or cheese or meat or whatever they'll all do it basically the the the, the fume the oil that gets into your throat because that's what it is it's basically just oil in your throat uh will dissolve in the fat and get carried away through your digestive system be fine be grand. this last one isn't so much a safety tip as it is a tool maintenance tip you don't want to let your tool burn out by itself when that happens, what it means is that the oil has burned out, the lamp oil you're using as fuel has burned out, and now the Kevlar is burning. It'll only burn for a little while because it doesn't really support flame very well, it's not a good fuel, but it will burn for a few seconds, and that's not good for it. It will cause your, it will cause the wick, the Kevlar wick, to degrade faster. So don't let it burn out by itself. Always have it, always put it out. You can do that by, when it's, um, when a fire toy is getting close to the end of the burn time for the oil, you'll notice the flame will start getting a little weaker. And when that happens, you can put it out by swinging the tool extra hard and extra fast. If you're going to try this, a thing to remember in particular with fire swords is that the tip will have more fuel because of gravity, because you held it upside down when you poured the fuel on, the tip will have more fuel in it. 
so it will be harder to put out and it will burn for longer than the rest of the wick. Okay, that's, I think that's it for safety. I think you're all ready to go. Go build yourself a fire sword and play around, but just make sure you do it safely. Just do it safely. Don't be a gobshite. That should be just about everything you need to know about making, using, and not murdering yourself with your fire sword. If you have any further questions, please feel free to use Google or to, you know, leave a comment. That also works. Was it cool? Was it really, really cool? Are you excited? I am excited. They're going to be helping me make more videos in the future, which, besides all the reasons I said before, is really helpful because it helps me get content out while I am working on really big videos like the Skull and Crossbones video, the Willow vlogs, and the really research intensive videos like the Character Bleed stuff. And if you want to check out any videos about LARP and what to do with LARP, take a look at the rest of our videos, by which I mean all of Cheyenne's previous videos. This is my first one on this channel. And don't forget to check out Hog and Dice's actual channel. They do really good work and I'm really excited to be working with them more in the future. Go check it out. Go, go, go look it up. Go now. The link is wherever Cheyenne put it. Go. You can also use that LH Show Me hashtag to request all kinds of tutorials. If you have tutorials specific for Steven in the materials that they said they were proficient in, or if you have tutorial requests for me that aren't just makeup, although makeup is still a welcome tutorial subject, please use the hashtag across social media and pitch us your tutorial idea. It is now an all-purpose LARP house, please show us how to do this thing hashtag. So, go forth. <laughs> That is all we have for you this week. Thank you so much for watching. You are loved and cherished, and if you have any questions, comments, emotional outbursts, if you want to support us, all of the links for all of that will be in the description of this video. And, as always, like us, subscribe to us. Fight with us. Are you, are you? They say he murdered him. Strange things did happen here. No we were going to fall and chop my penis off. We met at midnight in the hanging tree. Shut up, you. Come here, Dork. <laughs>